Hello, my name is Keith Hill and I'm with Home Run Automation and Safety. Today's video is going to go over the floating blinking option using our F3SG-RA safety global light curtain as well as the SD Manager 2 software. I have already gone through the procedure to get online and set the light curtain back to factory default. If you'd like to know how to do this, go to our video showing how to get online and set the light curtain back to factory default video. Okay, what we're going to do is, is we're going to come in and we're going to select floating blanking. All right, and with this, you don't really get a lot, this option, you don't get a lot of information off of this top screen. So we're really not going to go into too much detail on that one. But down here, when we do go and enable the floating blanking option, you will get a blue bar down at the bottom of the full light curtain, indicating that that is the zone that is set up for the floating object. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to want to do is we are going to come up here and enable the floating blanking option. You'll notice that we do get the blue line down here, indicating that the full length has been chosen. Now, for any reason you're mixing a couple options like the fixed blanking and floating blanking, and you're needing to make sure that the, the two zones don't collide with each other, you can come up here and select the zone adjustment button. The software will review the setup and make any corrections between the two zones if they are need to be done. Okay, the next choice that we have is our floating blanking mode. Presently, we only have one choice here, so we'll just keep that set for sequential beam mode. The next option that we have to set up is the floating blanking monitoring capability of the unit. This basically determines how the unit is going to react if the object is removed from the field of the light curtain. As a default, our first choice is lockout. During a lockout condition, if you do remove the object from the light curtain, the output will go off. You do need to put the object back into the light curtain and either hit the reset input or cycle power on the light curtain in order to reinstate the light curtain. Our next choice is disable monitoring. In a disable monitoring mode, you can basically take the object in and out of the light curtain without tripping the output. So you do need to be careful with this because depending on how large your floating object is, you can basically put that same object into the light curtain and it won't sense that it's there. So a hand or such things. So you do have to be careful with selecting this option. Our third choice is cancel blanking zone. With this, if you remove the object from the light curtain, the output will go off. In order to reinstate the light curtain, you do need to put the object back into the light curtain and then physically re, uh, cycle power to the unit in order to reinstate the light curtain. Hitting a reset button in this case will not work. Okay, so by default, I'm just going to go and keep it in the lockout condition. Our next choice, if we have multiple sensors hooked up, up here you'll notice that right now I only have a single light curtain, but if I had light curtains set up in series, I would see channel 1, channel 2, and channel 3. So depending on uh, whether or not you have multiple light curtains or just a single, will determine whether or not your temporary disable monitoring function will be enabled. You can only enable it if you have a single light curtain. You can't do it if you have multiple uh, light curtains in series. Now what happens with temporary disable monitoring function is depending on how you have the condition set, you will need to use external sensors, muting sensors, and then with based on how sensor A and sensor B turns on with the amount allotted time, you can go in and temporarily disable the light curtain for X amount of time. And then during before that X amount of time has um, 
drawn by, you need to put the object back in and the light curtain will be satisfied. If you don't get it in within that allotted time, then the output will turn off on the light curtain. The amount of time that you will get to take the object out and put it back in will be set down here. So whatever you have that set to will be the allotted time. Okay, our next choice down here is the number of beams that we're going to be physically blocking with our object. You'll use this pull down to set that value. I know with my object, typically it will the most it will actually block is going to be five beams. And then with the resolution and depending on how fast I move the object, I may come down to four beams in some cases, but that's still okay. So what will happen is, is if I leave this at zero, if it goes down to that fourth beam, it will trip the light curtain. So I'm going to go and select one here, which will allow me to block either four or five beams. So I got five minus one is four. So I can either do four or five beams and that will still be considered a safe condition. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, is we're going to come up here and we're going to write the configuration to the light curtain. When we click on the right icon, we'll get the configuration list. And if you scroll on down through, anything highlighted in yellow is physically what you changed from factory default at this point. So I'm just going to go in. I'm going to go and review it. It's okay. So I'm going to go and click the right button. We'll give the software a couple seconds to write the parameters to the light curtain. And it'll indicate that it did successfully write the parameters to the light curtain. So we're good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and uh, put my object into the field of the light curtain. And then I'm going to go and click this icon here to put the light curtain back into the monitoring mode. And it'll say, is it okay? And I'm going to just click OK. We'll give the software a couple of seconds. You heard my safety output turn on. And we should be good to go. So now what I'm going to do is to demonstrate how this works, I'm going to go to the top of the page. I'm going to go into Monitoring. And I'll select Start. You'll see presently I have one, two, three, four beams physically blocked. And then if I go and I move my object up and down, you'll see I may have four or I may have five beams blocked, but everything is still satisfied with the light curtains output. So I can just kind of bring my object up, bring my object down, and the light curtain works fine. If I happen to bring the beam one beam more, it trips the output. So we have successfully demonstrated how to set the F3SG Safety Global Light Curtain into a floating blanking condition. This ends the video for today. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.